What's going on everyone? Coach Aaron here, back again with another video to help you dominate on the platform. Alrighty everyone, so I figured today I put a little video together talking about verbal cues, the pros and cons to them, and how I feel some people are inaccurately looking at cues, implementing cues, or maybe dismissing cues. So the purpose of a verbal cue is for a coach to give a word or maybe a short phrase to the athlete to make them think of an action that they have to do. So you could say tight and then the athlete will think, okay, let me make sure I'm squeezing the bar or maybe that they're bracing against their belt. Whatever the cue is, that has been communicated to the athlete. But some people kind of take someone else's cue. They might go take a cue they heard at a competition or in the gym or online that was specific to a certain situation between a coach and athlete, and then they go and try that cue or whatever they think it means, whatever the action is, on their own. And it may work, oftentimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. And then they may dismiss the cue and go around telling everyone, oh, well, everyone yells out, stay tight, and it never actually works. But the way you need to look at it is, like I said, it's a form of communication between the coach and the athlete, and it's whatever word or phrase that helps that athlete understand what they have to do. The, the actual phrase doesn't really matter what it is. It doesn't even have to be related to the action. It's just whatever the, the athlete can think in the moment when they're under a heavy load, when they hear that word from their coach or that phrase from their coach, they think, okay, this is what I need to do. And eventually, when you're cueing the athlete enough times, then that becomes kind of second nature where they hear their coach, maybe they just hear the voice, the voice of their coach, don't even ha actually hear the phrase anymore, and they just instinctively know to do that action and it becomes second nature. So you don't want to try and take those cues out of context. A lot of times a cue is kind of to counter what the athlete is doing. So for example, if in a squat, the athlete is constantly going on their toes and the, the bar is going forward, their torso is going forward, their, maybe their heels are coming off the ground in the bottom of the squat, then a coach may cue them heels or stay on your heels or push through your heels to try and counter that and get them into the proper position. So some people on the outside may look in and say, oh, why are they cueing heels or push through your heels? You don't want to do that. You want to be pushing through your entire foot, the big toe, the little toe, and the heel, strong base of support, pushing completely down. And the, the average of that or the median of that is going to be the middle of the foot. Well, in reality, that's what the coach is probably trying to or hopefully trying to get the athlete to do. But to counter the extreme in one direction of them going on their toes so much, they're trying to cue them in the other extreme, in the other direction to put the weight on your heels or push through your heels to hopefully get them into that middle point. If you cue them, if they're pushing through their toes and you cue them, oh, well, just try and push a little further back a little in your foot. It may not be a good cue, it might not get the action that you want and the big of effect as you want. So you have to kind of look at it that way. You're looking from the outside in and depending on where it is or where you got the cue from, then you're only getting some of the information. You may see something online uh, in a training video uh, on YouTube or maybe like on Reddit or something like that. And you have to figure out how it's being applied in that situation and then how you can apply it in your situation. And that's why it's important to know either you as the athlete or if a coach that you're working with, what your weaknesses are. So you need to know in each movement, these are all my weaknesses are, some of them might be technical, some of them might be muscular, some of them might be mental. And then you have to figure out, okay, well, this is what the problem is, whatever the weaknesses are. And then here is the plan to solve those problems. And in that plan of solving those problems, maybe verbal cues from the coach to you, or maybe even if you're coaching yourself, you might have a training partner that gives you the, the cues in training in order to help you clear that gap and solve that problem. And that's why, like I said, again, it's important to know your weaknesses. I have a video on that. I'll put the little card up top where you can go and see how you can analyze your weaknesses for each lift so that you can build that proper plan for solving the problem if you do have that problem. 
if you don't have a problem in a particular lift or you don't have the specific problem that that cue is being used for, then you don't have to use that cue. You can maybe use a different cue for a different problem you have, or maybe you don't need any more. Maybe you're at such a high level of skill at a particular movement, just say like the squat, where you're not going on the toes, you are not rounding your upper back, your bar staying over the middle of the foot, you're locking out your knees at the top, then you don't need any more. Your instinct without having to think about it is naturally to execute that squat with proper technique regardless of the load. So in that point, it becomes easier because then you just focus on developing muscle mass, developing your strength and continuing to get stronger at that movement. All right, so don't be so quick to dismiss other people's cues or cues that you may have heard. Some cues are used a lot more in the past, maybe 10, 15 years ago it was all about keeping your head up in the squat or pushing through your heels in the squat, uh, driving your knees out and kind of people now maybe you've gone to away from those cues, maybe to other extremes or something like that of having your, your head more neutral or your chin tucked in the squat and everything like that. You wanna see it as a cue from the coach to the athlete to solve a specific problem and that cue may not work for you. It may work for you or maybe a different word or a different phrase works for you or maybe you don't even have that problem and you don't have to worry about it. All right, so hopefully that helps you out. Like I said, check that video on how to analyze your weaknesses. I'll also put it in the description below and I'll see you next time.